As good as NBA 2K22 has been, as much as people have been enjoying the game since launch, 2K is currently in the process of fumbling the bag. And I mean, truly fumbling the bag. Hey, there's a lot to talk about, but before we do, if y'all new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. You don't have to, but it'd be nice. Turn on the notification bell, you'll be notified next time I drop a video. So a couple days after NBA 2K launched, there was a very large Reddit post that went like this. Please 2K devs, for the love of God, Lord have mercy, please don't cave to whiny people in patch gameplay. It's near perfect and balanced. This got 2.8K upvotes, which is massive for the NBA 2K subreddit. And around the same time, Mike Wang himself on Twitter tweeted saying, glad you're enjoying it. There are no plans to touch gameplay for the foreseeable future. Wait, hold on. What's that sound? Okay, now that we're back from that. The Reddit post continued to say, I'll be the first to admit, I thought this was going to be a copy and paste of 2K21. And to my shock, I was wrong. Defense feels meaningful. Players seem to naturally stay glued to their defender, like in real life. Shooting feels just right. You can make threes without having 90 plus max badges, just like a real NBA player should be able to without feeling OP. He continues to praise the gameplay play before saying this. Please do not patch gameplay and significantly alter this masterpiece. This is the best release of 2K in years. Do not cave to whiny YouTubers. For the most part, this game feels smooth, realistic, and for the first time in a long time, a real basketball sim and not an arcade game. You can tell he's like an old head in his frame of mind, but he's right. The game does feel like it's in a good spot right now. That being said, the gameplay is not perfect, and as time has went on since this post has released, people have been having more and more complaints about the gameplay. Like any game, you're not gonna get a chance to experience what's wrong with it in the first day. Because once you get your badges and max out your attributes and you get familiar with the game, and there's a lot to it. Like you can get familiar with the 3v3 Pro-Am, the 5v5 Pro-Am, and the park. Each experience is gonna be different. I've played a decent amount of 3v3 Pro-Am. I've played a decent amount of park. I still have yet to try 5v5 Pro-Am personally. Damn, you see Chris just dunk, guys? The first thing that people have been complaining about is the steals. Steals in NBA 2K22 are like, bro, you can just get them whenever you want them if you're locked down. I have a two-way scoring machine, so bro, someone could click L2 and be protecting the ball, and I'm reaching around to grab it because it's mine. <laughs> it's my ball. Now, although I do get the opportunity to benefit from the fruits of steals being overpowered, I actually don't think the solution is to touch steals at all. I think the solution is to heavily buff the unpluckable badge, which as it stands, right now serves zero purpose. I guarantee you, bro, if you put on the unpluckable badge, I'm still stealing it from you whenever I want to. The badge is, is so hilariously useless that I saw this tweet from JA on Twitter saying this. The tallest build to get the Hall of Fame unpluckable badge, 5'9 slash 5'10 point guard. So if you don't want to make that build, you're getting gold unpluckable, which, and I repeat, serves no purpose. If you do like to dribble the ball and you don't want to get the ball ripped from you all the time, just put on the badge and the badge should serve a larger purpose in the overall gameplay experience. The second thing that people have been complaining about is whites. I agree with the post, actually. I don't think you should have to sink in 40, 50 hours of gameplay into my career to get your badges so that you can reasonably enjoy playing with your player and shooting consistently. I, well, I do believe there should be a skills gap. I also believe that consistent shooting shouldn't rely on 40, 50 hours of gameplay before you can even get to that point regardless of your release. But man, I'm lying to you if I tell you these whites don't drop consistently. Man, sometimes it drops for me and I'm like, bro, I shouldn't have deserved that win, bro. Right, There's a game I played, but we were just being outplayed. I knew, bro, I knew I didn't deserve to win that game, dog. I wanted to give them the win. That's how bad I felt about it. I think a large portion of that is actually how effective the sniper badge has been. So if you get slightly late or slightly early releases in NBA 2K22, they drop a lot more consistently if you have Hall of Fame sniper. I mean, I'm gonna say this right now, this might change, but so far, I actually kind of appreciate the badge. It is a significant improvement from flexible release, but I think it might be too overpowered because Sniper is the only badge where I can immediately tell based off of one game whether or not I have it equipped. Every other badge, I'd have to be like, I don't know, I can't tell if Catch and Shoot is equipped because, I mean, they're all marginal improvements, but Sniper just seems effective by all fronts. So whether or not the 2K devs decide to adjust that is up to them. I don't think they'll touch it personally. I think for the casual audience that doesn't want to have to release the ball perfectly and have 45 different shooting badges so they can shoot effectively, they would rather keep the game like this. And that's such a large majority that no matter how many people complain about it, I am unlikely to believe that that's gonna change. After 2K19 Disco Tech, Mike Wang was changing the sliders every two weeks. He's toned down dramatically. Like he's not doing that no more. Uh, so unless there's like a very serious issue with the gameplay, I highly doubt that any of those things I just addressed will be touched. I would recommend though, can we please significantly buff the unpluckable badge? It would save a lot of... Amen.
You said facts? facts. Come on in, Davis. I've been listening this whole time, bro. Like, yo, you've been spinning right now. Thank bro. you, man. Appreciate it. Back. Thank you. Wait, how do you feel about the unpluggable badge? It does not work. I get ripped 10 times a game. <laughs> I see the screenshot. G Man had 33 turnovers in my career, bro. 33, I swear. I'll link it to you, bro. It's crazy. And on that same note, the AI this year on NBA 2K22 are elite. But I'm starting to believe that the artificial intelligence in the game is actually smarter than the humans playing the game. This is a clip from the NBA 2K subreddit of a guy defending Ben Simmons by just sitting in the restricted area. <laughs> just quite possibly the funniest, the most realistic thing I've seen in my life. And he timed it very late. Oh my God, you can't make this stuff up. Ben Simmons is actually the person I enjoy playing the most against in my career. For some reason, he's very easy to steal from, bro. I got 13 steals in a game just spamming square on Ben Simmons. So as positive as the release has been, at least from the fans that are playing it, there's actually been a ton of issues outside of gameplay plaguing the game. NBA 2K knows about it because they've been spamming, and I do mean spamming, patches the first patch was a day one patch it fixed a lot of stability issues on the xbox and playstation the next patch 2k says our latest patch is live on the ps5 and xbox series xs bringing continued stability improvements to the game fixing several issues no gameplay changes another tweet saying our latest patch is live on the ps4 and pc bringing continued stability fixes to the game no gameplay changes other consoles coming soon to which 2k followed up and our latest patch is live experience experience and they quote stability fixes and my career storyline fixes and you might click on the link to get more information but it's as about as vague as their tweet was more stability fixes there was a lot of issues with people completing a mission in the my career story and them not being rewarded i dealt with that too which sucks because there's actually some missions in the nba 2k22 story where you need to complete them to continue playing my career games so people were stuck and couldn't play my career games because although they completed the mission it didn't register as completed to the game which brings us to the third issue that people have been complaining about and it has been the AI. The AI is, is smarter this year, significantly smarter. I'm playing my career on pro difficulty trying to farm badges, and it's like a brutal experience trying to do this stuff, bro. Not, not brutal in the sense that, like, I can't overcome it. Brutal in the sense that, like, this is the easiest difficulty? Because I'm trying here. Uh, Chris posts this tweet here saying, bro, 2K, whose career is this? Because it can't possibly be mine. Am I playing TJ McConnell or Prime Gary Payton? And he puts together this montage here, which truly illustrates, like, the experience of playing against AI on my career. No matter what you do, it's a steal. There was a mission where I had to get three assists to get like my incentives for Adidas and no, it was for my Puma deal. And bro, when I tell you that I had like 20 turnovers that game trying to throw alley-oops, and, and I'm saying like some of these alley-oops were on point passes. It's just the defense is like hawks this year, man. They really don't leave you open. And considering like he is up significantly in the, like it's 48-26, which is fine if you like, you know, you put on Hall of Fame difficulty and you want the hall of fame experience but for someone put it on the pro difficulty like damn they are not gonna have an easy go at this year's my career they just won't so in other news i reported about a week ago in a video that somebody hit level 40 a day after the game's launch those guys are boosting so disregard that right there the first legit person to hit it happened a few days after the game's launch and that was glidy here tweeting the first legit level 40 hashtag nba 2k22 to which i responded damn the other guys boosted <laughs> congrats dog level hitting level 40 at at least in season one this year has been pretty i don't want to say easy but most people will be able to do it if you play the game a decent amount but shout out to glidy i believe nba 2k20 he was the first legend in that game as well so he is a true grinder and in other news take two stock which is the company take two this a parent company of nba 2k and 2k sports has seen their stock Plumbing. Now, I don't want to sit here and tell you that I know everything there is to know about the stock market because it's the opposite. I really do know nothing about it. So I can't sit here and tell you why it's happening. All I do know is that in a video over a year ago, I bought one share of Take Two stock, which was worth at the time like $120. And now it's worth $150. So I've made some money on my investment, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to take that extra 30 and buy some VC, fellas. <laughs> no, but for real, it was at a peak of like $163 a month ago and it's dropped dramatically dramatically that's the news for that okay this is now like 2k i need y'all to pay attention look at me now and i'm looking at you now look at me don't f this up please the next gen experience i can't speak for current gen because i haven't played it the next gen experience is so littered with crashes and crashes and error codes and blue screens that it is actually taking the enjoyment out of an otherwise good experience i logged on to the game got packed up the second i touched down in the city got packed up i logged in again packed up logged in again packed 
packed up. One more time, packed up. I made it into the city. I was like, oh man, let me hit up my friends and see if they could join. They were getting packed up. Bro, after like 45 minutes of trying and a lot of being packed up, we finally got in the game. My teammate was packed up the second we loaded into that game. We're like, all right, let's try one more time. We loaded into another game to which I got packed up. So now they're playing without me. And I just said, it. let's just play 3v3 prime because the experience on the city was so full of being packed up that i was frustrated not only that but a day after the game released on video i said i haven't experienced any frame drops ladies and gentlemen that has changed yesterday i was playing bro and i cannot make this up i was in the city center going to do my little story modes i'm almost complete i might drop it in the next couple days doing the last cutscenes for the music and the fashion i've reached level 10 fellas story mode is pretty good i'm not gonna lie but in my in my traverse across the city center i was experiencing what i don't even want to call a frame drop it was like i froze in space for 10 seconds i moved up an inch and froze there for more 10 seconds it took me like minutes to just cross the city center because i kept freezing that's the only way to describe it so all of that to say you need more stability fixes and whatever stability fix 2k you did in the last patch has actually ruined my experience it has made it infinitely worse undo that one and do more stability patches please please don't finally get the gameplay good in a good situation and then ruin the game because your servers are dog please don't do that my solution to the city being like almost unplayable the last couple days for me was just to play 3v3 prime actually been having more fun on 3v3 prime than even in the city so maybe that was an interesting discovery damn i didn't realize till just now guys i've been overexposed this whole video and you guys didn't say nothing the complaints actually continue beyond that because the main complaint that i have actually one that i feel like more people aren't focusing on enough is how much vc prices have been inflated because although when you go to the store and you purchase Purchase VC is the same price as it was last year. That VC you purchased, that 200k VC or 450k VC, can do less this year. It's literally in game inflation. It costs significantly more to upgrade your player this year. If you want to complete the fashion story mode, it will take you like 50k VC of just spending money on clothes to do it. And that's on the low end. I spent probably 150k VC throughout the whole story. Because 2k will give a vague objective like put on a bold fit. And you buying all these fits trying to figure out what is bold? What is bold? me whole time the only thing you had to do was go to the alter ego store and purchase anything because that's what they considered bold they didn't tell me that though i had to purchase 100k worth of vc to do that there's more things that cost vc this year when you walk into the stores everything's more expensive your player is more expensive to upgrade and 2k's also been doing like little slick patches too because in their patch notes if you believed everything they were saying those are all the things that were adjusted 2k has said in multiple of the patch notes that no gameplay was adjusted but the same thing i keep hearing from everyone across the community was the Chris Brickley gym workouts have been patched dramatically. People were in the Chris Brickley gym practices upgrading their badges because it was the easiest way to do it and farm badges. It's like, okay, 2K patched it. They want us to be more miserable grinding badges and actually enjoying the game. Fine, 2K, if that's what you want the experience to be like. But they, they never like said that they did that. People just discovered that it was changed because they used to get like 8K badge progress and now they're only getting 5K badge progress. So just know that 2K is also patching things outside of the things they say in the patch notes and unfortunately we have to like stumble onto it and discover it in our experience playing the game because 2k is just not being transparent about it anyway let me know what y'all experience has been like in the comments down below how y'all been feeling about 2k22 if y'all enjoyed and you guys missed the last bit of news go ahead click this video over here but if you guys want to see me get to max level as a rapper in nba 2k22 click this video over here because i did go in the studio and i did have a lot of fun appreciate y'all watching i'll catch you guys in the next one